Welcome, everybody, to the Debbie Dashboard Scouting Session. I am your host, Brandon Lejeune from the Debbie Dashboard. I am here with my dashboard partners, Corey P. and Britt Sanders. Gentlemen, how are we tonight? Pretty good, Beautiful. pretty good. All right, man, we are going to be talking about Mr. Drake London going into his junior season at USC, an exciting Debbie player. Um, we're going to do a show today. We're going to break down his film, but we're also going to take a look at his metrics. Um, and give uh, both the metrics guys and the film guys like myself something to chew on while we look at Drake London. We're going to break down his film. We're going to look at his release and his route running. Uh, we're going to look at his ball skills and hands and his agility, speed, and his yak ability and his physicality and athleticism. And I've broken down film, a lot of all 22 film in this show today, um, kind of going through his traits and with the goal of deciding whether or not he is going to be a dynasty asset for us on our dynasty teams so he is obviously a uh, debbie asset right now that people are excited about he's gonna have a great opportunity going into usc next year with saint brown and tyler vaughn's gone so he is going to be the number one receiver um so we're excited to look in get into the film and uh we're going to get to it shortly but here first we're going to take a look at just some uh some numbers from last year so um why don't you take us through that Corey? and what, what did he do last year yeah, he finally had his breakout season in his sophomore year with uh, 33 catches, 502 receiving yards, good for 15.2 yards per catch. Uh, he grabbed three touchdowns, and it was all good for a 21.9% dominant rating. He's a huge guy at 6'5", he's got good weight at 210, and uh, I'm excited to dive into his film today. All right, man, let's get to it. So we're going to go through these criteria like we talked about, all right? I'm going to start with his release and his route running, all right? So let's take a look. Now, here he is right here. Okay. Um, now, a lot of these plays that you're going to see, a lot of this is all 22 film, and a lot of it are plays that he's not getting the catch, right? Because we're trying to break down his film. We want to go beyond the highlights of you just watching YouTube videos of his highlight films, right? So we're going to kind of look at these plays, kind of go through them. All right. And we want to, you know, again, focus on his route running and his release. All right. So again, you know, what, what is he doing to, to manipulate defenders as a guy that loves film? I'm watching wide receivers. I want to find, I want to look for guys that are def, you know, making their defenders, you know, manipulate their defenders before they make their cut and their break. You're going to hear me say that consistently on future shows on this show as well. I think it's really important that wide receivers create space for themselves and defensive manipulation is a part of that. All right. So again, here's a kind of a rounded route. You guys chime in whenever you want. All right. You can kind of see like a little hitch that he had. Yeah, a little hitch step, but he doesn't yeah, know anything to get this guy to, to, to really turn, right? No, there's no disruption at the line. And if you love manipulation at the line, you're not going to be very happy with all of Drake London's film. All right, so Drake London <laughs> played primarily out of this, this, you know, we were talking pre-show about he was, what, 86% of his plays? He's yeah. playing from the slot, all right? That is where he wins. So I think he's down here right now. Um, all right. Again, these are kind of blown up here because we want to see how is he route running against this player right here. Yeah, a little bit of contact at the, at the point of attack and then turns so, it out field, sits in the middle of the zone. So it's not – I mean, there's it's not a lot to it. But No, it's, it's not a lot badges. to it, but, but I'd like to see him. He does one little – see the little jab step there? Yeah. Little jab step, but he doesn't get this guy to move. And then he kind of mm -hmm. runs into him instead mm -hmm. of, you know – so, again, it just didn't look super – no hip sync or anything on that particular play. It was just kind of a little hitch and then just kind of run through you. So I don't know. It's like a little yeah. crap moment for him. Yeah. So here <laughs> he is up here. Okay. See what he does here. Just sits down in the zone. You're going to see a lot of plays Get here out. that he's getting a lot of short passes, right? That wasn't so. bad. Like I do give him some credit for his uh, mm -hmm. vision in zone, his vision uh, of the defense. Like, he sees the open zone between those two guys, gets a quick pass there, good hands to catch a pass. Like that was a good that was a decent play. Yeah. And we're gonna I look like at this play did. a little further, a little farther along in another segment. All right. So here he is again, right here. All right, again in the slot. So weird. Yeah, Tallest big guys in the slot. In, tallest slot guy in college right now, I think. Kind of the same thing. And then he does slow his route down a little bit to sit inside the two guys. Mm -hmm. Like again, he's understanding the zone coverage. It's the same kind of play, but yeah, I do give him credit for his smarts there. Would have liked to see him break that tackle though. 
Yeah. Yeah. Another free release. Another running into the defensive back. Yeah. That's, a, that's how so, he initiates his separation. Like you have to wonder how that's going to be at the next level, right? So that's it's a pretty be, be a wide, penalty, but. That, that's a wide step right there. Yeah. You know, it doesn't get a lot of hip sync, no explosion. I felt like he was kind of off balance a little bit, recovers nicely, comes back to yeah. the ball. But again, he gains I mean, leverage I, with his body there on the inside. So, I mean, like, he knows mm -hmm. how to use his body, but it, it is a lot of contact. Well, a little, yeah, it's quite a bit of contact. Look, he's right here. Nope. He's right here in the slot, right where he should be. Okay. <laughs> Get my flashlight together. Just kind of runs go. by, just kind of yeah. runs through the defenders. There's not a lot of film, guys, man. I watched almost every game. I have all 22 film availability for a lot of, a lot of games, and I didn't see a lot of press at all. I didn't see him mm -hmm. having to have hand contact at the line of scrimmage, nothing. All right, so let's he, take a look at his ball skills. Did you want to go back and see something, Corey? No, no, that's good. No, I was just saying he faced a lot of zone coverage. There wasn't a lot yeah. of guys playing on tough, tight, like tight coverage. So like, he was sitting in those zones, getting those easy catches a lot of the time. We can. I we think call it, that the Pac-12 special. Yeah, Pac-12, yeah. but it also it makes it hard for us to be evaluators, right? I mean, right, you right. Know, how is he going to face if we don't see it now? Um, and I didn't see a lot in his 20, you know, 19 film either. All right. So we're going to get to his ball hand skills and hands. All right. Where I think he, um, you know, does pretty well. So here he is again, right here in the slot as usual. All right. Yeah. This is where he's going to excel. Right. And that's, that's, tough right. Catch so, here. Right there. that's yeah. right. So, nice. I mean, this is his bread and butter. He's got the height. He's got the, you know, the ball skills. Another look finds another, just, you know, really does a nice yeah. job going up there. Catching going up that again. ball. Okay, so here he is right here. Kind of does he see that little move there? Yeah, I like that head fake he did. Little head fake. Oh man, good, yeah, good tracking. Good tracking ability. Yep, has some separation. Good stuff. That's a good play. Yep. So here he is right here on over here. Okay, and again, I like the way he. You know, goes to the center and then goes to the, you know, goes to the corner. And there again, yeah. good, nice. great effort on the ball skills. That guy yeah, just keep, gets keeps that moving. ball away. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, he's again. a smart player. That's, a, that's yep. like the best. That's like one of his best traits is how smart he is. I read the defense where to go. It's giving his quarterback a nice outlet. Yep. So this Strong was a play cap. we saw earlier. Okay. He's going to be showing up here in the middle of the field again, just showing his ball skills. If you guys remember that play. I like that. Yeah, you know, he knows he's going to get slammed here. Yeah, protects himself. But that was protects really the ball. Good. Yeah, he, he got that second hand on, and even he cradled that thing right away. That little that was a nice little move before he broke inside. All right, so this is another play here again. You're just going to see the ball skills. Nice man. Would have liked to have seen him extend a little higher, but he goes up for the ball. But he goes up nice, grabs it with his hands. I feel like he I feel like I had that in my notes. Going down. Actually, that his that his uh that his height his uh the height on his vert wasn't very big. <laughs> Doesn't look very big. Well, no. it's, it's interesting because he played um you know he played basketball. basketball. He actually plays yeah. basketball, I think, for USC. So th that would be surprising if he doesn't have a high vert. Yeah. And, and just another play. Oh, wide open know. right there. Yeah. Yeah. I just like the concentration on that, you know, again, you know, here's the route running we're talking about, right? I mean, is he doing anything special on the route running? Not really. He's just running and out and up. But hangs in the zone. Like you said, Corey, yeah. kind of smart player. Okay. So he's where is he? The ball a little bit. Okay. I think that's where he is. Again, just going, showing the ball. Skills and oh hands. yeah. Just, just fight too. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, he, he came into he came into college with a thirty one point nine uh, inch vert, so nothing nothing special about that at, at all. I think it was in this section where yeah, I had the notes. Yeah, there's two hurdle attempt in here somewhere. Yeah, so yeah, this is you his saw this play a lot. I like that. That's a nice dead leg. He moves yeah, well a nice, for a big guy. He does. I, I thought he did. 
Who? Like that's Post a nice, eight. yeah. I think he's in. I think he's inside, actually. Then. Yeah, he is. I saw that. I had to go back. I can't flashlight the wrong person. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. All right. So, again, they got they got this guy the ball, you know, in the middle of the field a lot like this. You know, he, he yeah. definitely finds the gaps in the zones. You know, I just don't find his, like, elite yak ability, though. I mean, I think he's got decent yak ability. Um, but you, did you see, like, the little lack of burst there? Yeah, I was yeah. going to say that. You know, I it's mean, like he gets, gets the ball, to right, exactly, he, like right here, right? Yeah. You know, can, can he beat number four? He just couldn't couldn't get there. His okay. stop and go is pretty lethargic. Like he, Yeah. So here he's up here. Got to wonder how much of that Another is him just play. not fully dedicating time to basketball or to football. What I don't like about yeah, the end of this thing. play that I want to put it, I don't like the contact. You know, you know, we did a show before, remember, about Jordan Addison? Remember we did Jordan Addison and we saw him a lot at the point of contact, you know, turn his, you know, like who does that, right? I mean, Open up the yeah. ribs. Why would you I mean, do that? You, you, you turn around like that. No, you should be laying a lick on that guy or that. But I'll tell you, I can't question this kid's physicality because we're going to talk about that here shortly. Um, yeah, he's, he is a tough bastard. I mean, there's no doubt about it. But like, here's his yak and build. Here's your hurdle. <laughs> that was the hurdle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the hurdle. That was yeah, the that giraffe was, hurdle, right? That, yeah. But you know what I want to see is why isn't he going this way? Yep. Right. Why not sure. shimmy this guy? And you know, so we're talking about his 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 agility here a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thirty one sports center boy. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So here he is right here. They play, they, they threw, they, they, Again, they, they run this, this play constantly. This oh. is the number one play that you see. If you really watch Drake London film, you're going to see that this is the play that he runs like three or four times a game. You did a nice job adjusting yeah. that pass. I thought, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just like, there's no burst after the catch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They create situations where it's tough to catch against him. Like, like you said, they run zone a lot in the pack. So they put him in the middle of the field and they throw it high. Who, who's going to beat him? Who's, you know what I mean? Like they create easy catches for him a lot of the times in this scheme. It feels like. Again, here's another play with him again, right? Using the little out, you know, yeah. again, he's, he's trying the hurdle and instead of trying to, <laughs> that's the second one. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Like, why not dead leg this guy and or, beat him, he's, right? He's got he's got 10 yards to the sideline. Just push it to the sideline and try to beat him Beat him to this corner. Right. You know? he's got You, you have the momentum at that point. The defender's flat-footed. Get another short pass. Did a nice what job staying on his feet. But the yeah, long he, speed. Oh, he gets cut, yeah. He gets caught Ooh, from long. The long yeah. speed on that. I, I, that's, yeah. yeah. He's not going to excel. Like I was really surprised that you know he's got those long legs, man. He's got that long frame, and so I don't think he's got that elite long speed by any means. No. Is that a linebacker he catching gets, up? There? Yeah, yeah. Was that a one more time? He almost gets tracked down by two guys. There. Yeah, he's lucky to break the one tackle. Uh, Twenty-one almost gets him there. Oh no, the, the safety. Twenty-one's the yeah, safety. It was safety. But still, yeah. you got to outrun a safety in college because you ain't gonna run out. Of you're not going to outrun a safety in the NFL. I think he's right here. Or right here. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. It was the second one. There he is in the middle again. Yeah. Finding keeps that. moving. Keeps there moving. There is another dead but yeah. He needs to use that more, man. It's effective. M mirrors the quarterback. Yeah. Plant and go. So I think from a physical standpoint, you know, I, I think he's got – I love this play for him. Just look oh, at the contact yeah, yeah. balance, the toughness. He just misses the end zone on this one, right? I mean, yeah. Just, you know, uh, I mean, shit. Yeah, it just really displays. So I, I think his contact balance is okay. I don't know if you can really have great contact balance. I mean, on this play he certainly does, but regularly with just those big long legs. You know, when you're yeah. that not, you know, low to the ground, I guess, you know, can you, you know – um 
There he is. You can just yeah, click the yeah, slot yeah, nine times out of ten, it'll probably it, be him. Yeah. But like like I don't think he excels he's, he's, in these plays. Do you guys think that he like they run this play constantly at USC you know for who, him? Yeah. You know who I don't understand. reminds me of? This reminds me of Nikhil Harry. <laughs> Big, tall, lanky guy. Dude, that's so funny. We separation. just talked about it pregame. We just the pre-show. We were just talking about the before you Harry. came. That's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. God, that's what I said. Like, I said I almost don't even want to say it because I don't want to give it like a like a real bad impression. But fuck yeah, he reminded me of Nikhil Harry. Yeah, this just did. screams Nikhil Harry to me. You know? Oh so shit, that's so funny you said that. Here he is right here. At least Nikhil actually faced some press coverage, though. But. Yeah, and he had a much better profile, which we'll talk about later, too. Again, I'm just showing the toughness and his strength here. You know, again, just not going down. He's he's yeah. He's got some play strength to him. It's definitely and one of his better the, qualities. Him and him and Addison had similar target saturation along the field, short center, deep center, and uh, at least for Drake, he's got a bit better better frame to yeah. handle those. Yeah. Uh, across the field throws he creates some yards right like he's finishing plays oh, yeah. as hard as he can so. Mm -hmm. so that's it man i mean you know so i think from you know just summarizing his film real quick i i just i really question how we're going to be able to evaluate his agility you know his ability at the next level without really seeing any press coverage i mean he's got a great um you know catch percentage but they're all real short kind of intermediate screens and I'm having a hard time really evaluating him as a, you know, an NFL prospect getting on my dynasty roster only to the fact that I don't see any kind of elite route running. I don't see any kind of, you know, manipulation. And I've watched almost all his plays, um, like uh, almost a lot of his games. And of course we can't go through all of those plays, but, um, and I pulled out the ones, but there's so many plays that look just like the ones that we've watched. You know what I mean? So I don't want to just keep going yeah. over the same things. I think his ball skills his downfield vertical threat and his ability to high point the ball and his catch radius is great, but I, I'm interested to hear what you guys thoughts process of them using him in this screen game. It just seems like it's not like his, his wheelhouse to me. I don't know. What are you guys thoughts? All right. And they essentially just use them. Oh, go, go ahead, man. I was just going to say, I have the same feelings about Seattle using Jimmy Graham as a blocking tight end. Why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they used him as a big possession slot receiver, right? Like, they, they worked him into space, or he, and he knew how to understand it, right? But the way they used him, like you said, makes it hard to give him a true evaluation, right? Like, it, everything he does, he does okay. He does well. He does okay in the way they ask to use him, but we've never seen him against press. We've barely seen him on the outside. Uh, there, he didn't face a ton of man coverage, so it, it's kind of hard to read him. But I mean, the good qualities are there, right? Like you said, the hands are good, the contested catch is good. Uh, he's a smart player, like we said. He knows how to attack zone coverage. He knows how to find the open zones. He knows how to give his quarterback an option. Mm -hmm. So I mean, I think there's a role for him in the NFL. Like I, I think I, he'll get there for sure. I just don't know if he's going to be a wide receiver two or wide receiver one for your Debbie team. Like, I don't – maybe he's an 800, six-touchdown guy in the NFL. I don't know. But use that use that body, right, as a big end zone threat or whatever. But I don't know if I see him as a, as a true one at this point yet. I mean, it, it's a hard evaluation. It really is. And I think I'm excited to hear what Britt has to say about his metrics right now because, you know, there's a lot of guys out there. I mean, look at his ADP at the top of this chart we got up here, 36, right? Um, you know, in our dashboard, we got him ranked, you know, more closer to 50. I'm a little, you know, I think we're consistent, you know, the three of us are a little lower on him probably than most, but I mean, this guy, again, I've been in Debbie drafts. I've been doing a lot of mock Debbie drafts, uh, in the, you know, this, this spring and stuff. And, and this guy's getting taken early, um, yeah, is. you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I mean, an ADP of 36 and not being able to see, but I think, I feel like this is what I'm so excited about this show for is now you guys be, are able to see for yourself to, as we break down his film, you know, because I think, again, a lot of people just get, you know, the hype train goes and people are like, oh, Drake London, his stats, his stats, USC. But I don't know. I have real questions. Um, so I don't know, Britt, maybe you can change my mind with the metrics. What do they say? You know, I, I'm, I will do my best to create a pitch that is positive and rosy and gold while staying true. Um, the one thing I want to point out is I feel like we need to take into consideration his teammates and his surrounding uh players when we're looking at this profile right so he's played with michael Pittman, he's played with amon ross st brown he's played with tyler vaughn's 
So those are three NFL tight end or th three NFL wide receivers that he's played with that he's had to compete against with targets for his production profile. So his freshman year, age 18, he had a traditional dominator rating of 11.94, excuse me. He had an adjusted dominator of 13.24. So he's getting an uptick because he's not really super active in the touchdown department, but he's doing well with yards. His market share of the, his freshman year was 12.98%. Not what you love to see, but he's surrounded by quite a bit of talent. So I'm, it's nothing to, to knock him as a freshman. From a efficiency standpoint, he had a 1.67% uh, yards per team pass attempt, which is, you know, not bad. I'm not going to knock him for that either. His size, uh, 6'5", 210 right now, gives him a BMI of 24.9. That's two years that he's had to grow. I would love to see what he's weighing at right now. I think he's probably going to be close around 220, you know, uh, 215. And if he's able to come into the NFL combine at like that 225, 220 weight, I'll feel a bit better about what I'm seeing in terms of like his speed score and things like that. So as of right now, uh, 205, 6, 6, 4, uh player running a 451. It's going to give him a, pro a projected height adjusted speed score of 107.4. And the only difference between height adjusted and weight adjusted is as it sounds, we're just taking height into consideration for wide receivers to create a level playing ground to get a better feel and perspective on a wide receiver's speed, right? A player that runs a 4-4 uh, flat at 160 is not the same speed as a player that runs a 4-4 flat at 220, right? So that's all we're trying to do is create a level playing field. Again, I'm looking for numbers above 100. So uh, contrary to what we saw in film, he seems to have enough speed that he's not going to get just absolutely wrecked um, playing the, in the NFL. So he's going to have that requisite speed. He has a 19.2 age breakout age uh so it's a sophomore year and he's a young player right so he's gonna come into the league growth he's gonna come into the league around 20 21 so he's gonna be a young player that you're gonna be able to kind of grow and gonna be able to kind of progress and have on your your team a bit longer uh his junior year he had a traditional dominator rating of 21.92 percent he had an adjusted dominator rating of 24.48%. So again, he's getting that bump because he's more involved with the yardage and not surprisingly, not as involved with the touchdown share. Now looking from a career dominator percentage, he has a current career adjusted dominator, dominator rating of 18.86%. Very low. However, I think when Amon Ra leaves and Tyler Vaughn leaves, you're going to see Drake bump out into the X or Z position. And I'm expecting to see him see a bigger jump in touchdowns and yards. That's what I'm hoping for in terms of growth. And what we saw was with Michael Pittman left, he saw his market share jump from 12.98% to 26.2%. Now we'll get into vacated production in different shows. But when it comes to produ vacated production in the wide receiver market, USC has a, a decent amount of production that they're vacating right now. So I think there's a reasonable jump to expect for Drake London to increase his workload and increase what he's able to do through the air. From an efficiency standpoint, he also increased his, his age 19 season. He had a 1.89 yards per team pass attempt. Again, so now he's, at, he's above that threshold that I like to see for my wide receivers from efficiency standpoint. There's a lot of things that I'm a bit concerned about. But from his profile, he's having that incremental increase every single year that makes me feel at least a little better. So if we can see his junior year really come together from the film, see him be a little bit more involved on the offense, not involved in screen passes, uh, being more involved with um, you know more touchdown and just a more physical route running and just showing us more, then I think his profile is going to back up what we, we – yeah, and I had to, Funny when I'm, and uh, or, excuse me, a very nice film. Yeah, and I think I, that's what I think we're all looking for. You know, does he change the role on the offense? I want to see him beat someone one on one down the field and make a play, not sit in a gap, not sit in a zone, take an easy pass. You know, little curl routes and stop routes in the middle of the field. So, well, that's why I love having you here, Britt. Man, you can go over all these numbers. It's awesome <laughs> stuff, man. You know, give us a, a thing. So. To wrap up this show, so uh, what are we thinking? Is he a buy, sell, and a hold for our dynasty rosters? I think he is a hold right now for me. I'm going to give him one more year. Um, I don't think I'd be going out aggressively buying Drake London right now, but I'm not so sure I would be selling him either. 
you know, like I said, that ADP, if you're not a believer after watching this show, um, you could probably cash in and get a nice uh, return on him. What are your guys' thoughts? Um, I think – go ahead. Go ahead. I think for me, uh, Drake London seems like the type of person where his current ADP is that I'm going to want to flip for an NFL asset, right? So he's got enough hype where you can flip him for someone that can contribute to your NFL team now. And I think in terms of like your risk of losing a highly efficient, effective NFL receiver in the future is relatively low. So if you can flip him for a solid uh, wide receiver to flex play, I think that may be the right move for you this year. Uh, I think he's going to be a hold for me as well. Um, I don't think the evaluation is complete. I don't think I can properly assess how he's going to be because I haven't seen enough of it. I haven't seen enough examples of it. Um, the numbers are there, and um, it's, the, it's the upside, right? It's the size, the speed, the weight. Uh, you want to see if it can all come together, right? Because that's what the NFL loves to see. They want to see those metrics. I mean, guys like Miles Boykin, guys like Denzel Mims, whatever, they get huge bumps once they run these kind of crazy speeds and with their size, right? So I, I see the upside there, and for now I'm going to hold. And I, I agree on the sell, but if you are thinking of selling him, you got to wait till in season now because you're going to see his production go through the roof now with those other guys gone. So I think his, his peak value is going to be in season, but I also think it's when the evaluation is going to change. So it's going to be an uh, interesting year for Mr. Drake London. Yeah. Well, there's a flip side to that too. He's going to get a lot more coverage. It's going to get a lot more yeah. attention, you know, with those guys gone. But so, um, all right, man, this guys, this has been great. Love doing these shows together. You can find all of us at the Debbie dashboard. Um, follow us all on Twitter. You can see our Twitter handles. So great show guys, man. Thanks for uh, tuning in and joining us. Yeah, awesome, Brad. Thanks, Take guys. Take it easy, guys.